It is the Deep Dive Halftime Show where we have a 10 to 7 stalemate-ish type of game between the Cowboys and the Chargies. Chargers get the ball first in the second half, but uh, outside of their one opening drive where things were operating smoothly, it has been a bad night for the Chargers offense so far. The Cowboys have been the sharper team, the more well-prepared team. Uh, to this point in the contest, and their three-point lead is probably doing them a little bit of a disservice in telling how tilted it's been so far. They are gaining almost six yards per play. They have outgained the Chargers by a cool 75 yards, and uh, were it not for some weird penalties, which ultimately haven't hurt them, uh, you would say that Dallas is the better team so far pretty comfortably. Um what, yeah, I mean, the last they, two drives. Yeah, the last two drives combined for about 120 yards, and they only got three points. Yeah. Obviously, you know this one a little less their fault, more the running out of clock kind of moment. But the other one, the downs, which is interesting. We'll see how McCarthy treats fourth downs now. Some of these coaches who are kind of on the fence about going forward in those plus spots, they can really get uh, a little gun shy after they have one one bad experience like that. That was not a good sneak. Like yeah. there was a there was there's a lot you have a lot better plays than that in the playbook because they've been moving the ball and I don't know and Troy's being weird. Um, Kellen's <laughs> Kellen oh, is not putting yeah. together. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kel, Kellen is not putting together the Kellen revenge game uh, mm. game plan whatsoever. Mm. What do you think of? I don't know. Staley adjustments, Kellen adjustments. They're going to need to make some because the offense is, like you say, it's not on par with Dallas right now. We're sitting here. We're saddled with some Chargers positions, which kind of tilts this. But yeah, if I had to bet this, I would take Cowboys money line second half. Yeah. Uh, it's not crazy. Um, Chargers I mean, will start with the ball. As the Chargers Cowboys do start with the ball. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will just say, though, like the Chargers play calling has been weak. Um, I don't really know. I, you know they've wasted some uh, they've wasted some downs on some stupid plays. Uh, their rushing attack is wildly inept so far. They're getting nothing going on the ground. They've had two third and shorts that were super convertible. Uh, I don't think they got either one of Both them. Both of those play calls were just they, oh, those even weren't the good run plays. Telegraphed and predictable and and, and then the, yeah. the throw to Parham too. He was under pressure. There's been some good pressure on both sides. I want to say yeah. that another kind of uh, notch in Dallas's column there. Dak has been really good with sack avoidance. Yeah. Like yes. they've had some good pressure and he has made it look uh, easy to get away with from it a few times where he's turned it into some plus runs. I've seen he got caught on the one, but I mean, th that one was he avoided like two sacks before he finally got run down uh, for like a two or three yard loss. So <sighs> it's, it's been a really nice showing from Dak, honestly. Like there's been some good passes. Like uh, who was it that dropped a gallop or um, the, the long pass? Gallop oh, kind of, in the end zone. Yeah. They yeah, end right up getting right a touchdown on that drive anyway. But yeah. uh, I mean, basically, kind of the like Cowboys' said. adjustments are a lot easier. Yeah, it was. It was, it was a little high. But yeah, the Cowboys' adjustments are easier than the um, than the Chargers' adjustments. The Cowboys just need to stop throwing it to Gallup and throw it to CD. <laughs> I don't know why. That would be tough. Um, the Chargers' adjustments are have Derwin James stop getting 15 yard penalties. That would be a good place to start. I uh, don't yeah, need both, to give Dallas both three the yards. calls both um, sides sucked. Yeah, I mean the char the the Chargers. I don't even know why their offense looks so blah, looks so dead. Uh, the, this is not a great spot for the Cowboys second half, just based on situational stuff. Like the fact that they don't get the ball first, combined with the fact that this is their second week traveling and this is another late game. Like all that's not in their favor. So I'm not dying to play Cowboys money line second half. You want to? Do Cowboys like team total over second half and just see if maybe this turns into a little bit totals. of a scoring game or uh, or opposite Chargers team total under because I didn't even see the number I thought it was I don't want to get Chargers. Polish middled here I thought we we're gonna have like Chargers two and a half in the second half this isn't a very good price like no Cowboys really. money line I thought we we're gonna get like plus 130 this is not great I'm like plus 115 um Chargers minus two and a half total let's see Total is still at 24 and a half, but it's coming down. What do you think of that? Um, both, I mean, Dallas has moved. Uh, hmm. I mean, the Chargers defense kind of stinks. Um, 
I I don't I only worry about the over if like I mean you know you know what let's just play the over because Dallas is gonna if they if Dallas gets a two score lead here we know we can count on them to continue to put their foot on the gas and they may just run away with this one like this might be an ugly uh, thirty one to ten type of final if the Cowboys score first in the second half and then if they don't then this could get into a situation where we're uh, you know trading scores late. And we could get there. So over 24 and a half is kind of interesting. But I was going to see if anyone has 24 because it is really trying to get there. Ah, there's a little, little bit of buyback now on 24 and a half on the over. So 24 and a half, even money over. Need some need some scores here. Chargers kind of come out, got to come out and score here. Do you think something's kinda wrong with Herbert? Uh, obviously, his left hand is injured. And for whatever reason, he's had some really bad throws. He's made some bad decisions. He's under duress a lot. Like, I mean, the the Cowboys defense just has been playing with more juice so far. Yeah, I think the pressure's played into that a little bit, but also just not having a run game. Uh, They got bailed out on a couple third and longs by some penalties to put them in third and shorts, which they still didn't fucking convert. Mm -hmm. But being being in third and long the whole time sucks. I looked at that too for uh, Tampa. When When I went back and did looking back at a few games, I couldn't figure out why Tampa played so poorly against a defense. You should have a little better luck. And it was like, oh, it was third and seven on average over 12 third downs. Like yeah. just never going to have luck when you have a super long third, you know, third and down in distance. Mm-hmm. So yeah, bet, bet on lines 24. I can get, I can get with that. We'll grade against 24 and a half. We're on a, we're on a heater. I'm fine with it. Okay. Min, mini mini heater. It's only been like two or three. Yeah, uh, that first touchdown drive from the Chargers was so electric. I was like, "All right, here we go." Like this is uh, this is this is it's on. Uh, and then they just fizzled so hard the next three drives. Um, the ten play fifty six yarder that ended up with the punt was rough because Herbert had Allen and he had Everett. There was a couple of pretty clear opportunities on that drive. I thought to at least get into field goal territory. To get zero points there was tough. Uh, shout um, out, shout out to the Discord guys. Once we had those first two, my finger was hovering over that under 57 and a half, I believe it was live oof. book I had open. And I know a couple people did grab that, which in hindsight, obviously looking pretty good. A couple yeah. places have 24. So yeah, if you are gonna either way, if you're gonna play this under, you know, if you're if you're opposite of, go find yeah. that 24 and a half at a decent price. If you're looking over, there are some 24s in the market. I will say this: the I, the fact that the Chargers running off, running attack is so useless, and they could potentially pivot away from that and just drop back, drop back, drop back. I yeah. think lends itself to an over. Um, we haven't seen any turnovers to this point in the game, although there were some close calls. There were some turnover worthy plays that didn't really didn't really make it happen. Um, Dak has been sacked twice. Herbert sack avoidance has been pretty real too because he's been under duress a lot. I bet you his pressure number is probably in like the 10 ish range. Um, out of what, only 18 dropbacks? There's only been a couple dropbacks where I feel like he's been completely unencumbered uh, with pressure. Dak, nice run on that touchdown. That was, uh, that was a that was clever misdirection by him. That's one I, br- I wrote down like when I go watch this later or if I get a chance to. I'll rewatch any part of this tomorrow. It felt like there had to be something going on defensively there for the middle to be that wide open. Like there was, there was a receiver that was like triple covered or something because there was just, there was just nobody in the middle part of the field. There it felt like everybody had to rush back to fill that void. And obviously they didn't get there nearly much of the time. Yeah. I had Palmer first touchdown score, but my first touchdown score bets are cursed basically just listing a bunch of guys who can't score. Um, <laughs> so Palmer getting called back was on par. Good, good play. I mean, the play to Keenan was nice. It was, it was pretty easy. If you can just set stuff like that, use Keenan Allen. I know they're going to, they're going to man him up and it's a bit of a problem, but I mean, it's still, it's um, still a, a very good receiver. I'm not sure. Yeah, I guess uh, I have tip, tip of the hat to Dan Quinn. Uh, he's got this defense playing really hard. Um, those guys are flying around the field right now. Uh, I had I, I should have asked you this before the game. I guess it didn't sure. matter. I had my I had my position in place days ago, but curious to what you think as far as you know the narrative, whatever you want to call it, around Kellen Moore revenge game. You know that's that's the jokey revenge 
fun thing we say, but you know, the, the actual actionable part of it where people are like, Oh, you know, he knows this team. He was there. Well, you think about that too. Like Dan Quinn coached against this offense in practice for uh, quite a while too. Obviously it's not the exact same office that ran in Dallas, but like, is that just a wash or is somebody have an upper hand there? No, know? that's a good point. Uh, I would lean an upper hand for Dan Quinn. Cause I like him better as a coach. I think, yeah, uh, he's just a better coordinator. Yeah. Isn't he? Yeah, in my opinion, um, I would say this though that the the the, the knowing your opponent and all that like that cuts both ways. Like you might know and have a, an idea of we're going to attack them here, here, and here, um, and that might have been present in that first drive where the Chargers looked like world beaters. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that that might have been some of the local knowledge, um, but I think ultimately adjusting and pivoting through the game having some looks that are a little bit more creative and and really just the fact that the cowboys haven't faced any truly elite passers until now and that they're holding their own tremendously well i think is really kind of the key takeaway here um i had a pretty good rating on the chargers offensive line coming into this one but they're getting beat pretty regularly um collapse in the pocket edge pressure is real uh and in general, I think uh, one adjustment I would make if I was the Chargers, I would get uh, Herbert on the rollout a little bit more often. Just uh, just kind of let him do some stuff out of structure because he's pretty pretty effective at still chucking it uh, in those spots. Um, they should let both teams sit down and go off into the, like some sort of side field and script out more plays. That part of the game was good. <laughs> and I guess Dallas has had a couple nice drives since, but yeah. Uh, obviously we need to see much better play design, probably better sequencing. You know, the best, best way to not fuck it up on third and two, just don't be in third downs. Yeah. That's average, point, average, man. five, average. Well, five some of that is play. what we were talking about, which is pivoting away from the running game. Cause the running game was conceding downs. Um, at one yeah, point they had down. less than two yards of carry. I'd, I'd assume it's still, yeah, it's still, yeah. 10 carries for 19 yards. Like what are we doing here guys? Um, uh, I don't know. Maybe you need balanced attack to keep the linebackers a little bit honest, but I don't think that. I mean, they're playing light boxes anyway, so the fact that you can't get your run game going against this team that's effectively using a safety as a linebacker is a bad sign for the Chargers. Yeah, yeah. It's it's this weird situation you have between like you know these people who think they're too smart for. It's too smart for themselves when while while they're coaching, and just like seeing what's plain as day right in front of your nose. Sometimes it's like, like we saw in the Rams game, they needed to run the ball. That was a team that they could run against, and it really opened things up. Like sometimes there are, it's like you need to run more. Like going into this game, we would have never said that, but it's it's plain as day right now. You need to run the ball, and yeah. sometimes there's just games where it's like, man you need to stop running the ball or do you, you know, or, or you need to run it, you know, or if you are running, you just need to have some more innovative looks like yeah. what you're trying to do is too predictable. Yeah. It's, it's either you need to stop running or you need to stop running those plays. Yeah. Cause like you said, you said, you phrased it well, you're conceding it down. You're just basically, it's, it's a sack bunt without runners on. Like, oh, just just take it. Just take it. He'll just give you an hour. We'll, you know, just, we'll play with one. Yeah, I'm afraid I might get beaned here. I'm just going to lay this one down and jog the first guy. I'm pretty so. fast. I mean, maybe I'll beat it. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do like a drag bunt from a lefty. That is, uh, you know, analytics be damned. That's still a fun aesthetic. Yeah. Um, okay. So I guess if I'm looking for an adjustment for the Chargers here, I'd like to see some rollouts. I'd like to see, I, you know, honestly, like Herbert, they're giving him space to operate. Uh, he should try. They, you know, I'd like to see some design runs, get his, use his, some of his athleticism because um, they're vacating that part of this field. Uh, and uh, the, the general, I mean, I, yeah. The turnover is probably going to flip this game one way or the other anyway, but uh, I'd like to see a, a little bit more creativity offensively out of the Chargers. Who do you think is more likely to throw? Oh a turn? man, Joshua Palmer's having a game of his life, man. I'm um, glad he's active. Who, who do you think is too. more likely Oof. to throw an interception? Uh, boy. Coming in, it's it's like the answer is Dak, but he, he's pretty sharp. And the second ineligible man downfield taking a big play away from the LA tonight. Uh, the refs have been pretty ticky tack 
which has been pretty annoying. Um, uh, yeah, I think the second unnecessary roughness against Derwin James was probably warranted, but some of these other penalties have been like, uh, uh, okay. The roughing the passer, terrible. The, down, the, the ineligible player downfield thing, I get it. I mean, if you played, you understand, like, once – once linemen start moving, you know, at a certain point, you're just you're just biting completely on a run. Like, all right, they're run blocking. It's it's really unfair if they get too far downfield because everybody just everyone just starts getting sucked right up into the run. Yep. And that's why that rule's there. But man, some of those some of them are a little like it's clear he's just beating the shit out of his defender. <laughs> like he's not he's not trying to go downfield and trick anybody. He's just absolutely beating the pants off somebody. Yeah. Um Triple X Achilles had asked a question about can you tell a difference between OC Lombardi and Moore? Not really. Um there are a handful of you know more aggressive shots down the field, but that felt like that was maybe not even dictated by more. That's just, that was always the plan. Like, you know, I don't, we don't care who the next OC is, but we need to be more aggressive. <laughs> and so they are. Yeah. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, you know, it's, it does feel like uh, Herbert still doing a little bit of drying on the vine and he does look off tonight. I mean, to me, uh, I don't have a good reason why other than the finger. Uh, I know How much that, on that, he one, on that thing. That thing looks a like lot. a, it looks like a 10 inch jelly man. I mean, yeah. it is. It flopped. I mean, it it yeah. looks like something the Buffalo Bills fans would throw on the field. That thing was. Huge, <laughs> huge. He's got the, the classic he, dildo lands, finger. He's trying, yeah. he's trying to hold it up. I mean, that thing is just. The classic wobbling. dildo finger. Uh, I also was. I mean, I, 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 he, there was one play where he got hit pretty hard. And when he went down, he was obviously protecting it. Right. So like he's aware of it. And that might be that, you know, just a little bit of like subconscious. Uh, maybe he's on painkillers. Who knows? Uh, there's a little something off with uh, Herbert tonight that I can't really put my finger on. So uh, right now, I would say he's finger more likely on. to he's more likely to throw a pick than Dak at this just, moment. Just hang on for a second down after Josh Palmer is destroying the secondary. Um, <laughs> there, Josh Palmer, you don't want to, you, you can't waste them all at the beginning of the second half, man. You got a whole second half to play. Yeah, you got you to you portion him accordingly. Oh, um, if, they're lucky they got that third down converted. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, if they didn't get that going quick, that was stopped at the line. Just playing with fire here. Jesus oh my God. Um, yeah, there is something to having an injury like that where you know if you get yeah. hit really hard, yeah. it, like it is going to hurt like crazy. And it, it's the same thing. Like they said that. I remember the first time I really heard about yeah. this was the Brady knee injury of like whatever, 07, 08, whenever that was. Yep. Um, Dallas trying to know, get when, fat men on, on, on and off the field. Substitutions coming in at the last minute here. Throw Chargers, I think they, I think that was a, just a, it was a, it was a, they got the defense in a. I don't know. Who knows? Um, the uh, tra- you, you know Charles what I'm saying. The, the mental yeah, part of the mental part of having an injury is like trusting and yes. Uh, there's always a, that little nagging, like oh, I can't, I can't do everything I could do because, you know, if you land on this, it's like man, when you cut your finger, you, you just bang it against everything somehow and you don't yeah. realize why that's happening for some reason it's like gravity it's a gravity problem um yeah. the uh legal shift okay then all right where do, all where right. do you stand on the brandon staley hot seat like i i mean charles Saul, there, Saul right? brings it up uh chargers next year gonna be a busy team under head coach ben johnson i mean that's like uh that's fan fiction dream. here man that's fan yeah, yeah that's that's fan fiction i i mean the problem with staley is pretty straightforward which is your defense is poorly poorly uh conceived and if you're a defensive coach and you're not even bringing that to the table why wh- what are we doing why do we got you the reason he wasn't fired last year from what i understand was because tom telesco is also on a similar hot seat and he's not going to get another opportunity to fire a head coach and hire a guy like this is it they ride into the sunset together here if it succeeds or fails and staley for what it's worth just doesn't have the same pulse that i think we all expected after uh, you know, coordinating a really amazing Rams defense. I guess it turns out that having Aaron Donald and J- Jalen Ramsey in their prime is is better than whatever knowledge Staley was bringing to the table. Can you believe that, Andy? <laughs> yeah, 
it's crazy how how we are. I don't know what is it like three years, four years into Staley. Where where do we sit? Is in this? that it? If it it feels like we you you solve these questions pretty quickly. He took over from Anthony Lynn, and it felt like a such a substantial upgrade at the moment because of this the in game decision making, and then it all kind of uh, faded. For, I mean, first year he was awesome, yeah. With the 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 in game decision making was great, but yeah, the the biggest part was he was he was this defensive coach. We were going to improve this defense. We haven't seen it yet, and yeah. we've had. I mean, how many huge stars have we had in the secondary, uh, in this pass rush, like big yeah. names? And this defense yeah. just has never gotten there. This is one of the worst teams in just EPA per dropback defense uh, in the league. And it continues to do this sort of thing every year. And it, it's crazy how we, we see this right away when these coaches move on. Like, oh, this guy isn't a McVay guy. This guy isn't a Shanty guy. He was just there. Yeah, he happened to be there, and he well, not be rubbed off like like he he isn't getting it. <laughs> yeah, but and the same thing can be said like oh the the defense wasn't good because of him; it was good because of Aaron Donald. Yeah, and, you know, he only I spent hear, one year. He only, he only spent one year in the Rams that. anyway. He only coordinated defense yeah. for one year. He was outside linebackers coach in Chicago and Denver over the balance of three years. I don't know that I remember any of those defenses being especially noteworthy. He got the uh, L.A. Rams D coordinator job for one year. I think did they fire Wade Phillips after the Super Bowl, and then they brought in Staley. I don't remember who he took over for from the Rams, but uh, he was only there for one year in 2020, and then he got the uh, Chargers job somehow. Um, I, the, but it's funny he, that we talk yeah. about that because I think this is what they think they're going to get in Carolina now. They got a they got a McVay guy. I'm there. interested to see if that uh, is a thing. If, if that's anything, yeah. I'm I'm excited to find out it because it's either going to be a bunch, uh, as in a massive change in offensive philosophy, game plan. No, you can't change the whole offense over the course of two weeks, but you can certainly change the sequencing, the play calling. Mm -hmm. You know, just the decision making on you know what kind of plays you're going to run in certain situations that matter. Yep. Um, so. Curious to see what we get because not only it's kind of a twofold thing. Like if the play calling is better, that's great. But if you free Reich up to be a better head coach, he has more time to concentrate on in-game decision making, in-game, you know, Cowboys play defense calling. just swarming like madmen. That was a pretty impressive play. That, that second down play. Oh man. <laughs> they had that dead to rights every which way. Somehow Herbert got the ball off and got it to Eklar, and they were all over it. Yeah. Um, here comes Parsons now. Herbert rolls out. Oh, he's going to run. He's going to get it. Go. Good job, buddy. Let's go, Good Herbert. He ain't scared of that finger. Justin I was wrong. Wheels, Herbert. Uh, if Dak can run it, so can I. I like it. Um, that uh, was actually a nice little movie made there. Uh, yeah. All yeah. right. So, but yeah, something to keep in mind. Watch for in a couple weeks here. Downtown Thomas Brown. Josh taking Allen over play calling. Yeah. Yeah. Downtown Thomas Brown. Well, I, I mean, the, yeah, the, the McVeigh fairy dust and the Shanahan fairy dust. Did they give him the dust. first down? Uh, I guess they didn't. It's fourth and one. I guess he got tapped. It looked to me like he surely made the line to game, but I didn't really see where his knee went. Uh, oh, yeah, you know what? Like, he was short. He was short. He was short. The floppy finger just didn't quite have it. Oh, if this fourth down doesn't get converted, that's going to stink. Yeah, then they just go to bed. If they if they fail here, too, it's crazy. And somebody had the stat. Yeah, that was a really well-defended play. Yeah, really well done. No points. No points. Oh, I have a migraine. Blech. Um, blech. Blech. That was about as bad. As, I mean, I fumbled through the end zone would have been worse because it would have been Dallas better field position, but that was we, horrific. You talk, we talk kind of final thought here. We talk Ugh. about the chat, the chess game. You know, we, we did a lot of talking in the preseason about, you know, the evolution of teams having to combat this too high shell and some of the things coordinators do. Do you think there's something macro that's happening with NFL defenses that is causing basically everybody to be horrible in the red zone this year. Yeah. It, get, you know, it's something. the way they're, it's the way they're, they're, uh, the personnel is being, you know, the, the lighter personnel, basically defenses are figuring out we have to play with lighter personnel. 
But Faster. if you can find a couple, yeah, if you can find a couple of key guys who are run stop plus and also can cover, then, you know, all of a sudden you have kind of unlocked, I think, very good red zone defense when the field gets shorter, right? Because if those guys are not, you know, basically as the two high safeties get closer and closer to the line of scrimmage combined with your other guys out there doing run stop, like you're just a dynamite yeah, uh, red this zone is, defense. This is the only good red zone team is the, is the Dolphins. But yeah, somebody somebody had a stat. It, it is considerably down over the first five, six weeks compared to a normal season compared to the last few seasons. And I think you're right. Teams have, you know, over the past 10 years gotten smaller on defense. You want faster guys. You, you know, you want guys who can play. I mean, basically you need a linebacker who can play at all three levels. Like he needs to be blitzing. He needs to be a linebacker. And he also needs to be a coverage guy. If you, and, you know, some of these fast players, I think you're probably right. They kind of still take them out when you get down there. Like it doesn't matter if we've said, Hey, this is the right off. The right defense is faster quicker versatile a, a shitload of strong safeties out there like yeah. six strong safeties but then they would still when you get down into the red zone they'd still put the heavies in like for some reason because that's just you know it's the same thing you see in every industry well that's the way it's always been done like we need to bulk up and stop them from just hammering it in here whereas you know maybe maybe there is something to that it'd be interesting to have someone much smarter than me look into kind of defensive personnel this year compared to previous years yeah i mean i think it's a i think it's a matter of just the next evolution of how you how you are what your personnel you are you're you know, you know nobody nobody base nobody uses base defense anymore off slow off ball linebackers don't have a role in this league um, no, like a nickel a nickel corner used to be a guy who came in you know as a no you know, I, I need to come in because it's third down and they're putting a third wide receiver on the field, which is nuts. Whereas like these nickel corners play like 80% of the game now. Yeah. And also even beyond that, there's a ton of uh, um, hybridization, right? Like safeties, corners, crossover and stuff like you see, you're, mm -hmm. you're seeing that all over the place. And, uh, and a lot, and there's a couple of good safety corner hybrid guys that are just sick run fit on top of everything. And if you can do it all, then yeah. Yeah. Nickel, uh, nickel has become dime. That's inflation. Yeah. Motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dime is the new nickel is what you mean. Dime is the right? new nickel. There we dime go. is the new nickel. Dime is the new yeah. nickel. We've, uh, yeah, it's in inflation. That would be the, yep. if I made a YouTube video about this, it would be inflation in the secondary secondary inflation effects. Yeah, what are you gonna do about that, Jerome? Is he still the guy? I don't even know who the who runs the Fed now. Yeah, Jerome's got a like, ten year cycle, right? Jerome Powell. So, Jerome Hayden J. Powell, He's seventy. God, get someone younger in there. That's not how it works, man. That up a little. I know. Third and eight. It would be nice if uh, actually you know, shit, man. Oh no, yeah, he assumed office in twenty eighteen. He's only the sixteenth chair of the Federal Reserve. Did you know that? Everything I know about the Federal Reserve and those banks I learned from the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio film. Now you or catch me if you can. What about the uh, the Too Big to Fail documentary? You didn't see that one with with Paul Giamatti <gasps> as Ben I Bernanke. Did. It's been. A, I think I have seen that. I've seriously nope. watched the big. I've watched the Big Short like four times in the last six. Yeah, weeks. the Big Short's a, that's a win. God, such a good one. Yeah. All I right. Wish Michael Lewis you. hadn't ruined the Big Short for me. I know I gotta like <laughs> separate myself from that now. Definitely yeah. can't ever watch the blind side again. Jesus. Yeah. No. Uh did you know Alan Greenspan was the Fed director for 18 years and 173 days? Holy hell. Reagan, George for some W. Reason, Bill for and some reason, George uh, H. W. Bill and George W. Bush. Alan presidents. Greenspan and Alan Selig mesh into one person in my head. Well, that's a weird. Uh, I know, I know. Crossover. Like I, when you said Alan Greenspan, <laughs> Bud Selig's face popped into my head. They look similar facially. They have the same kind of Skeletor, like weird, <laughs> yeah, weird it's Skeletor terrible. jowls. Yeah, terrible. I think they're probably both passed away, right? I gotta look mm, it up. Did Bud Selig die? I'm not a baseball did. guy. Alan Greenspan is 97 and alive. How about that? 
Look at you, Gallon Greenspan. Our ceiling is 97. 89 and alive. Wow, over two. Wow. <laughs> we are fully resurrected. I mean, I, you know, Bud Sealy, do you want to, should we kick, should we kick the tires? He got another, uh, another swing as commissioner in him. I mean, couldn't, can't do be doing worse. Uh, postseason baseball has never felt less, less, uh, I've never ha- felt less juice <laughs> for postseason baseball in my life. The twins, uh, um, uh, the twins blue Jays game one is the only game that I've enjoyed of the entire playoffs in baseball so far. They've been it's unwatchable. The only, it's the only game I really watched. <laughs> it's because I was there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. like on Twitter when you see someone trending, you're like, Oh no, please Uh-oh. be doing something noteworthy. Don't be dead, Wallace Sean. I thought Wallace Sean <laughs> was dead today. It turned out he was just uh. He was protesting the uh, the bombings and whatnot in Gaza. Mm, okay. All right. <laughs> Inconceivable, um, he said. Yeah. Uh-oh, Jason Kelsey is trending. Should I be worried? I mean, that's probably just the thing. Hmm. Those guys are in a lot of commercials now. I think also um, he's probably at the Phillies game. Did you see my baseball bet, though, today? No, what'd you bet? So uh, our guy PD, big yeah. Astros fan, he yeah, bet... Yeah. He bet um, Jordan and Bregman to have home runs. Okay. So I went to the book. I'm like, I'm going to tail that. I like home run bets. They're like first touchdown bets. So I bet those small. And then I was I was scrolling. And, and then somebody had brought up like, Jordan's really sick. Or Jordan, he's really sick. Like he has diarrhea and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I clicked on his. Uh, what it was, so I clicked on his. Uh, it was 30 to 1 to hit two home runs. So I put a few bucks on that. I put a few bucks on like <laughs> home run, extra base hit, first at bat. Like I kind of cleaned up on baseball accidentally. And I didn't watch the second half of the game. I just got a shitload of notifications in the chat when he hit his <laughs> second one. I'm like, oh shit. Oh like, uh, cool. Yeah, just 30 to 1 baseball. Yeah, the uh, it was the Air Jordan flu game. That's that's what we called it. I said, <laughs> we're gonna do it. It's funny too, the Somebody tweeted a picture of Jordan, not the flu game one, but just him. Like, uh, maybe they were referencing that. That was he was poised. <laughs> Probably. At that point. I still. I that still would make sense. Tweet. That would make sense. I'm gonna go find that tweet. It was one of the sportsbook tweets. So. Yeah. Uh, right. I'd love a touchdown here. <laughs> Is that um, asking too much? <laughs> it's not asking a lot. Uh, we've only. This is had... gonna be funny when we bet under over 24 and a half, and this is the final score. Cash is a teaser, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I don't think we're done, done scoring, but uh, I would doubt. Boy, it. oh boy, the the Chargers' willingness to just eat clock here is weird to me. You know, like they're they're they are taking the clock down under fourteen every time. They're running up the middle, and you know they're they're they are in no hurry, which I think is a little surprising and strange. Um, you technically would only do that if you think you're a meaningful underdog and you're worried about your defense being on the field with their offense. And that doesn't exactly check out with what I would expect the game state to, you know, you know, to be telling you if you're a head coach. Has um, any, does anyone have a hot take on Quentin Johnston? Do they just not like him? Is he not getting the, the offense? He, he has should... he run more than two routes in this game? He has one target for no catches. Like they're just not using him. They drafted him fairly high. They, you know, they've lost a receiver at this point. He should be elevated and basically like two guys passed him. You know, he, he's like their fifth option. I don't understand why they were yeah. so high on him. You know who not. they should have taken? Sam Laporta. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that guy would have been yeah. great in this system. They could really use a dynamic tight end badly. Okay. Gerald Everett. I don't know why we're doing end rounds with to the tight end, but um, lift shots. Brandon Staley makes me want to claw my eyes out. Yep, that's where I'm at too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. JSN, uh, yeah. So JSN got used a little more, and this is this is part of the reason. Just a little quick handicap on one of my teaser legs. Sure. Uh, a couple people pointed out this might be a thing. It was a thing. Chernoff pointed out already this morning that. The this was a, a lot more used against Cincinnati, but they they didn't go three wide receiver early, and people were mad, and people thought well, it was because it's you know JSN, maybe he's not getting it, maybe they don't like using him. A lot of it did come down to the fact that they were so fucking beat up on the offensive line. Yeah, and they, they were also very good. On, they are very good out of that. 
personal they're, they're package, good. 12 and 22, yeah. they're good out of that. Yeah, the 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 two packages there, the twelves and twenty twos, anything with just the two wide receivers out there, or one, they've been good with two tight ends, but they needed it for blocking. And now that they're a little yeah. healthier, they did go a lot more. Th- they did got three wide receiver sets. Yeah, and Arizona is not set up to deal with that with those three. Who's uh, so, limping number forty one? Michael Davis? I, no, he's forty five. Love, love uh, the Rams as a teaser leg this week. And yeah, I think that makes ton of sense. Wait, the Rams? Really, so the, really you know, you're talking it. about the Seahawks. Seahawks against the Cardinals. Oh, you like teasing down the Seahawks. Yeah. Excuse yeah, me. that's teasing I, the Seahawks I down. Com- completely agree with that. Uh, I don't know who that was limping around at there. 41? Must be a special teams player. Cameron yeah, this is McCutcheon, like, the like, cornerback. Kenny Walker. I don't know if he has a billion. That would be a record. The the fire <laughs> leg, the fire leg was going to be Detroit. And and then yeah. They took some money. There's some big moves already this week. Uh, most of them are just people are realizing, like, I'm going to blindly bet unders, I guess, and all of them are going to cash, or like 90% of them, because Jacksonville was like three yeah. or four points off the open. Obviously, yeah. that's quarterback stuff. Chicago, Vegas is quarterback stuff, too, but, man, that that's dropped. Like, there were some places that had like 45, 46, yeah. that's under 38. Yeah. Buffalo, New England dropped. Atlanta dropped. Baltimore, Detroit dropped. Like you want to talk about some real quick? a lot of under money. So, um, the totals this year on average have been forty-four. That's been the closing total on average, forty-four. What if we throw out Miami games? Well, hang on a second. So, just uh, <laughs> like on a macro sense, forty-four has yep, been yep, the total, yep. right? Uh, the average score of a game has been forty-three and a half. That said, yeah. blind betting unders have hit at a 60% clip, 61 almost, mm-hmm. which is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think anyone actually even needed to hear me say that out loud. Um, the, 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 the issue is that there is some skew in the mean where there's been some, you know, some competitive games, high scoring, pulling the average up. When the, yeah, the median, median, median are not yeah, close. the median is diverging. Yeah, it's it's been wild to see it, and so uh, you're actually your median has been on the other side of across a couple of key numbers in totals. So that's why that's in general has been such a, a clear sign to the under so far this year. The average total should probably be in like the 40, 43 range, good, good uh, maybe question forty-two for, and a half. I don't I don't know if he's being facetious or not. Sometimes people are just turds, but if you don't know what blind betting is, Drew is referring to if you just bought blind bet, if you bet every single under all season long without even considering not picking and choosing, but just across the board, every single under. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm I'm blind bet Philly every, every week, every year. Like there's been some years in the NBA where we've come into the season and there was a pretty palpable a rule change that would have that was expected to have a palpable impact on scoring conditions and you didn't need to know exactly what that impact was going to be just that it was to bet the over in every game until it was adjusted and so for two weeks yeah. you could literally just fire overs and they hit at like 70 percent clip until the average total moved up from 220 to 225 <laughs> and so then you know once you know where it settles down you're like okay i guess they were missing by five points on average to start the season yeah. which is <clears throat> massive, <laughs> massive massive miss so yeah yeah at this point if you have some teams if you have a matchup of teams where the defenses aren't complete shit and the offenses are lacking in the explosive play department, lacking mm-hmm. in the third down conversion department, lacking in every where everybody is in the you know the red zone. Yeah. As we see another fucking failed red zone for the Chargers. That's a spot where man there's I, almost some all dunders. Yeah, that was awful. Uh, that whole sequence in the red zone was terrible. Um, I'm sick to my stomach. Yeah, I don't think our second half over is going to get there even if there is four overtimes. Like in college, <laughs> we, yeah, we need we need college we're going overtime to need rules. Mid game so. rules change. They went at our guy. Uh, they went at our guy Parham, but uh, it was Donald Parham. Uh, D- Donnie P. We call him Donnie P. They went at Donnie we P. Donnie but P. Uh, it was uh, hey. Do you remember Nelly? Close. Nelly, remember? who? Yeah, of course. Yeah, with the bandaid on his face. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why that country grandma. 
yeah, I don't know why that hit hit the Spotify, but then it just went right to the Nelly. I went to a Nelly playlist. Fuck yeah, a lot of bangers. Yeah, they were all good. They were yeah. all good. Uh, Ride with me stands oh. up. The test stands the test of time. Country grammar is very good. Country grammar, obviously huge. Ei, underlay, yeah, yeah. underlay, mama. Ei, ei, oh. Yeah. Nelly Furtado, of course. <laughs> oh, there was a yeah. It was like ten songs in a row. Shake your tail feather. Uh, Keon, where are you getting them colors? Are you dyeing them? That's Air Force <laughs> ones. <laughs> that was good. Oh, he did the one with the girl too. Uh, I'm gonna find mm. it. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm. Not Kellis. Kelly Rowland. Oh, yeah, yeah. The girl from uh, uh, Dilemma. Destiny's Remember Child. The- yeah, Des- yeah, Destiny Shot. That was the number oh, one, right? That was a banger. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we haven't got any scoring. I guess the hot streak goes to an end. We'll hopefully hopefully just see Dallas continue to shoot themselves in the foot. I'm predicting a pick six on this next drive, which would be great for all the things I bet. Let's give it to me, Dak. I need to go home and go to bed. I'll see you guys. The uh, Chargers have managed to uh, take the lead in yards gained so far in this game. Yeah, those were two nice drives. They just need to finish. 